Hey, we're taking a deep dive into Family Tree DNA's website, its DNA tests such as Family Finder, which is the broad view for genetic genealogy, mitochondrial DNA, which is the mother's line, and Y DNA, which is the father's line. In fact, we have so much to cover that I've decided to break this up into a three-part series. So today, we are looking at an overview of the family tree uh, DNA and how they got started, their website, and the family finder service that they offer, which is the autosomal DNA, which is similar to what Ancestry does, and the services that they offer uh, throughout their websites. So I'd like to point out that this is not sponsored uh, by Family Tree DNA, but is here to provide you with a better understanding of what tools you can use to help you with your family research. If you're interested in signing up uh, or purchasing a, a Family Tree DNA kit, I've put an affiliate link in the show notes below for your convenience. Also know that at the time of this recording, some of the services are brand new and well, they may not look exactly the same by the time you see this video because they're still in beta testing and they're still fine tuning some of those resources, but I managed to get a sneak peek at some of that stuff. So hopefully, uh, you'll get a better understanding of some of the new tools that they've got coming up. If you are new to DNA side of family history, I have produced several videos about DNA and uh, what tests to take, what DNA strategies you can take to help you with your research. I'll put a link for all of that in the show notes as well as appearing in a flag on the screen right now. And well, it'll also be on the Genealogy TV website at genealogytv.org. They will help you get started understanding how you can use DNA to help further your research. Family Tree DNA is the only company that allows Y-DNA and mitochondrial DNA testing to the consumer. We're gonna talk about both of those. Uh, the Y-DNA test we're gonna talk about in part two of this series and the mitochondrial DNA testing we're gonna talk about in part three. We've got a lot to cover, but first, let me introduce myself. If this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further, faster, and factually with your family research. Now, don't forget that Genealogy TV has a website at genealogytv.org, a newsletter, and a Facebook page for Genealogy TV. Check out all of that. All of those links are in the show notes below. Now, this is a footnotes episode, and well, I use footnotes where I do interviews, and so I like to call them footnotes because it's in the footnotes where the real sources are. And well, the real sources are this. I reached out to Family Tree DNA and I asked them to help us understand what services are available from Family Tree DNA and how they can help you with your research. Well, they sent me two. <laughs> two folks to help us out. So the real sources today are Clayton Condor. She is the marketing director over there at Family Tree DNA, as well as Megan Peters, who is a project manager there. Together, they're gonna walk us through all of that right now. Welcome to Genealogy TV. I really appreciate you both being here to help uh, the Genealogy TV audience understand a little bit more about Family Tree DNA. Uh, so thank you guys for being here. Um, we're gonna go through a lot of stuff. So um, let's, let's jump into, if you can give me just a little bit of background, first of all, about Family Tree DNA and, and a little bit about how it all got started. Yeah, so, um... Family Tree DNA was founded in 1999 um, by Bennett Greenspan, and Bennett was a, um, a genealogist, a hobbyist genealogist, and he hit a roadblock in his ancestry research. And the story Bennett's told me uh, is he hit this roadblock, it was really bugging him, uh, and he was outside walking his dog one night in the middle of the night, and just thinking about this roadblock while he was walking his dog. And all of a sudden, um, this idea popped in his head of, I couldn't I use DNA to figure this out. And then at that point, I think within the next day or 24 hours, Bennett called um, Michael Hammer at the University of Arizona and asked him if he could do a DNA test. And basically Bennett was told, you know, 
know we can't do this test for you, uh, but by the way, I get calls like this all the time. And if you can start a company, you should maybe think about starting a company. And then that's kind of how Family Tree DNA um, you know, began. It began with our own founder's journey and his journey of hitting a roadblock. Um, so our first test that we ever sold at Family Tree DNA was a Y-DNA test. And um, so we've been around for about 20 years now. Uh, we were the founders of the direct-to-consumer uh, DNA testing uh, industry for genealogy. And we're located here in Houston, Texas. Fabulous. Well, so, okay, so if somebody's brand new to Family Tree DNA and they really don't know much about it at all, you know, maybe perhaps... They have tested at, you know, one of the other companies and done the autosomal DNA, but now we've got options to do several different things between the Y DNA and the, and uh, you have the autosomal DNA with, I believe you call it family finder, correct? Yes. And, uh, and then the mitochondrial DNA. So here you guys have this broken out, right? Into three different options for people researching their family history, correct? Yes. Well, okay, yeah, we, so we have three different uh, tests um, or types of products. They are uh, Y-DNA uh, and then mitochondrial DNA tests and then the family finder. Um, and then within Y-DNA, we offer different levels of testing depending on your research, um, the research that you're trying to do. Um, our the test that we recommend out of the Y and DNA to get started typically is the Y67. Um, same thing with um, M uh, mtDNA. We offer two DNA tests, the mtDNA plus and the full uh, mitochondrial sequence test, MT full sequence. Uh, and, but we typically recommend users take the MT full sequence uh, when they're getting started with their mtDNA. Okay, so for the folks at home who might not be familiar with what we're talking about, so the Family Finder uh, is the autosomal DNA test, which would be something similar to what Ancestry does. And the Y DNA mm -hmm. test is only going to research the, the father's line or the surname line, uh, the male line. Mm -hmm. And then the mitochondrial uh, DNA is uh, handed down from uh, the mother to the children, both male and female children, but it only continues on down through the female line. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay, so um, so let's jump into just kind of an overview of of the website and and whatever you can show us as far as now. I understand you guys are getting a new dashboard. We are, and we're really excited about it. Um, we are getting a new dashboard. Uh, the dashboard that we're going to show you um, is still in uh, our QA testing stage. Uh -huh. So. That also means that some of the text that you might see on the dashboard is going to be a little different um, when it's released, but um, it's okay. It, We're just happy to get a tour of it. <laughs> so, but we do want everyone to know, though, that you know if you see a, a typo or some kind of error in it, it's because you're looking at our QA dashboard. Um, it's not in production at this point. No worries, no worries, and and hopefully by the time that this video is released. Uh, this new dashboard will be out uh, to the public. Um, for those at home, we are pre-recording this prior to its release, so uh, bear with us while we work through some of the uh, unfinished product. But why don't you go ahead and share your uh, dashboard with us and give us a give us an idea of what uh, what we're looking at. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, this is our going to be our new dashboard. Um, it will be released in early middle of September. Um, and it is just kind of, um, a, a refresh. We're hoping that it's going to be easier for users to, uh, get to their results, um, and, and understand their results in the beginning as well. Here you've got your actions and this is going to be, we have a lot of times where we have updates and maybe people don't, um, the, realize that we've done some type of feature update, maybe we've changed our terms of service, um, or 
you know, they've ordered a test on invoice. There's all kinds of different scenarios where um, people have different actions or things that need attention. And so we've created an area here for people to quickly see um, anything new that's going on or any important updates that we want to let them know about. Um, here, and we can, we'll get into this at some point in time, I'm sure during our um, call, but um, right here are your group projects. One of the things about Family Tree DNA that differentiates us from um, the other guys are our group projects. And we really encourage um, members to, people who take a test with Family Tree DNA, whether it's autosomal, Y, or mtDNA, to join group projects. And there's a ton of them out there. I think the last time I checked, we have over 8,000 group projects. And group projects are run by what we call group project administrators. And group project administrators are avid genealogists who are doing research for that particular group. Um, it can be, we have surname pro group projects. Um, you've got haplogroup group projects. We've got geographical group projects. Um, so, you know, as you can see, this person has joined quite a few different group projects. And it's kind of, they're kind of neat because you're gonna share your information with the group project administrators. You have different sharing options and giving them access to certain things. But it's kind of like having someone do the research for you and um, you know like I said all the group projects have a different goal in mind um, but and they can educate you as you get deeper into the um, the research and the testing they can kind of advise you on what other tests to go into they are not employees of family tree DNA these are volunteers um, so they're just a really good resource for our customers um, well, so here you know how does somebody, let me ask you real quick, if somebody wants to become a, a group administrator, how do they do that? I mean, that's probably a whole, not to get into the weeds too much, but I'm just curious, is that just something they uh, apply to or? They so just... they can apply. Megan, I'll let you um, answer this one. Yeah, um, on our website, we have a section where you can search for um, different groups. Um, regardless of if you're a Family Tree DNA member yet or not. And uh -huh. so you can search and see if there's an interest group that fits your research. If there's not, then there's a section there for you to um, like apply to be an admin. And so we'll create a project that meets your specific research goals. And you can kind of start that and kind of... Um, get more people to join to, to help your research cause. Fabulous, thank you. I just, not to get off subject, but I decided that maybe somebody <laughs> might wanna do that, so. All right, be, and please if, continue on. It, just so you know, if you come across a group project and you're an avid genealogist and you're going, I wanna help with this group project, there can be multiple group project administrators um, assigned to, a, that are part of a group project. So, you know, you can always reach out to those guys and, uh, you know, see if, you know, you can also become what we call gap, a gap. So. I bet, you know, the, the project administrators would probably love to have help. <laughs> um, then next on our dashboard are these cool little, this is a new addition to our dashboard. It's called badges. And um, these badges are, for instance, if you've taken a Y DNA test, this is your Y DNA haplogroup. And then as well as an mtDNA test, uh, here's your mtDNA haplogroup. And it's just a quick reference to for, you know, you've taken a test. You can see here you've got your haplogroups. But, you know, sometimes, I mean, I, people do, are, do memorize their haplogroups. But a lot of times you're, you know, what's that one last letter in my haplogroup? It's just a quick, easy way to get to and see your haplogroup. And um, so, so then we'll go into our different... Um, section other sections that have to do with the tests on our uh, new dashboard so we've got the family finder test um, here uh, and then these are going to be all of the tools and features associated with the family finder test and then same thing with your maternal your mtDNA test um, here you can see the level that you've tested at um, the this person has tested uh, all the way to the MT full sequence, so it shows up that they would have both plus and FMS results. 
Um, and then you've got your Y DNA test. This person has taken all the way up to the big Y 700 test, which is the highest level um, of our Y DNA testing that you can do. So all levels of the Y DNA test shows up here. It's just a good reference on what you've taken. Um, I believe if you haven't taken something, these will be grayed out. So it can just, you can see the available options to you. Um, here you will have our um, additional uh, tests and tools. We partner with different um, companies that we think that our customers might be interested in and in, in their products. I don't think I mentioned this before, but another thing that makes Family Tree DNA very different from everyone else is we have our own in-house lab. We are the only company out of the, all the big guys that has our own in-house lab. Um, and so it just creates opportunities for us to do some different partnerships, especially if like we help service some of these, these companies. Um, we also have factoid testing, um, which you can do, for example, we've got the warrior gene test, or um, I think another one is the um, freckles test, um, things like, or the alcohol flush test. Um, so we do offer those. And then we've got some other tools here, which is our public haplotrees. Um, uh, it's the Y-DNA public haplotree, haplotree and the MT-DNA haplo haplotree, which we can get into further. And then next is going to be our family tree tool. Uh, and I know we're going to talk about that also, but another exciting thing about the family tree is we're doing a, um, we're about to release a new family tree. So we've got a lot of really cool new things going on. Um, so in regards to um, your dashboard layout, we are also creating a more customizable dashboard um, because different people have different reasons for testing, different interests and different, um, you know, they want different, certain features or tools are more important to them than they are to maybe another user. So here you're gonna be able to uh, rearrange your dashboard, um, set up your view press, uh, preferences to hide and uh, show certain things. Um, and then you're also going to be able to create these uh, quick ask access links, access links, um, which will you can choose up to five. And these links will show up here across your dashboard, dashboard depending on what you choose. I'll give you an example. Um, so the next time you come into your um, dashboard, and the functionality isn't quite there yet because you'll be able to select them all at once, once the live version goes. But you can have up to five of these here and then you can quickly access the things that are really important to you. Fabulous. That is cool. That is nice. That's yeah. a nice feature, um, really. Well, let's jump into the Family Finder. You wanna talk about the Family Finder? Yeah, um, I think that that's a great place to start. Um, so as you said, our Family Finder test is our autosomal DNA test. Um, we also refer to it as the Family Ancestry test. Um, we have a, so our Family Finder features and tools um, are our matching database, uh, the My Origins, which is the uh, breakdown of your ethnicity, as lots of people refer to it as, the matrix, um, the chromosome browser, uh, ancient origins, and we've got advanced matches. Um, we've also got an option uh, that I think is really important to a lot of people because people like to have their raw data. Um, you can download your family finder uh, raw data here. So my origins is like Clayton said, our um, ethnicity um, percentage where it'll list the high level um, regions that we provide to people and you can click for further um, information and further breakdowns here. We also have a concept of trace results to where they don't quite um, meet our thresholds for giving a full um, breakdown um, of them, but they are things that we feel like it's important to share with customers. My origins is our um, ethnicity percentages that we offer our customers. And so this is a kind of synopsis page where you can see the high level overview 
of where your um, you know ancestry is coming from. And so you can click on these to kind of get a deeper dive into um, further refined subgroups. We also have a concept of trace results where you have tiny amounts of um, different populations, but they may not be um, large enough amounts for us to actually classify them in our breakdown of your origin. This map will give uh, a better detail of where these origins are coming from. And so this user has um, Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry from Central Europe. And so that's represented here. If we click on this origin, we'll see that it is um, a part of the European um, cluster and it's Southern Europe. And then there's more information down here when you click on that region to learn more about that specific origin. Um, we are always trying to make as many advancements um, as possible with, I mean, all of our products, but this one, you know, definitely trying to make as much advancement as we can. And so we do have a uh, family ancestry survey that allows users to tell us where their ancestry is from. And that way we can better provide these origins to our users with that information that they're providing us. I can see how that would strengthen your ethnicity estimates by doing that. So we can go through um, ancient origins now, which is, uh, which is a very interesting um, kind of deep history, um, anthropology dive into European origins. And so this will tell you what percentage of ancient groups uh, your DNA still kind of carries. And so we have Middle Age invaders, farmers, and hunter and gatherers, um, as well as a non-European um, component. And so if we view this map, we can see these percentages. We can click on them, see the path that these groups took to get to different areas. Um, there's information as well as information about different dig sites um, where these ancient DNA components were found and that we analyzed the DNA from. Um, so Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. I've been wondering when archaeology was going to get involved with, uh, you know, uh, uh, with, with family history, you know. Yeah, exactly. This is... I find it very interesting uh, being able to analyze DNA from dig sites all across the world. Um, and it's kind of nice to have it uh, relating to you and your specific ancestry as a just user. That is definitely a unique tool. I've not seen that anywhere else. <laughs> so tell us uh, briefly about the cousin matches. These are going to be your autosomal DNA matches. So this is our Family Finder matching database. It's going to be anyone um, in our database that has matching turned on. I think that's another thing to point out that because there's some people out that want to just um, get their ethnicity ancestry reports. There's some people that, you know, aren't really interested in doing the true genealogy research or um, and so they turn matching off. So you can turn matching on and off and you can turn it on and off at different levels of testing as well. Um, so this is going to be your family finder matches. Um, you can see that this person has a, a lot of matches um, in the system. This is what we will call um, in your matches. It's going to be your uh, familial matching, um, what we like to refer to as bucketing. So I just want to point that out. Um, this is if you, and we'll show you the tree later, but this is connected to your tree. And once you start building out your tree and um, you can I then identify on which side of it, of your family these matches derive from, whether it's your maternal and paternal side. And then there are those um, cases where you have the both, um, especially in different, different um, like uh, groups of individuals. Um, you'll see some of the times these, these uh, long distance cousins um, falling into both uh, on your maternal and your paternal side. 
Here you can see a lot of our users will have their images uploaded. Um, here again, it helps you see is the bucketing tool where you can see whether or not this is on your maternal side or your um, paternal side um, with these little pink and blue um, squares. Uh, you can also contact your matches. Uh, all of our matches have email addresses if they have matching turned on. Um, so uh, whether it's to further your research or you're looking for somebody um, in particular, you know, you have the ability to communicate and connect with your matches. Um, you can also view your matches trees um, if they have tree sharing turned on um, by clicking here. Um, you can also uh, do little notes. So throughout your research, if you need to start making little notes on different um, particular people, um, you have a little area where that'll save. Uh, you've got the date that they matched with you, um, their relationship uh, range, their this person is most likely a mother or father, then you've got the father or a son, and so on and so forth. Your shared symptom organs, your longest block, your X match, um, and your linked relationships, uh, and then your ancestral surnames. And I think that one thing we didn't point out here is uh, your ancestral surnames. We get these because whenever you go in, you log into your account for the first time, uh, we really would like people to give information about like all the surnames that they have in their family and there's in your account settings there's the option to do this and provide some additional information. Um, as, and as you can see, it's helpful because say you're, you know, you are looking for somebody, you have a, a surname, but this person's surname doesn't match yours. But then you can see a list of a lot of the surnames that they know and they've researched and they know are part of their family. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a, a, a give and take situation on the platform. The more information you give, um, is better for other people researching their ancestry as well as it helps the more people uh, information other people give it helps research your own research um, I like the so. fact that you guys have the uh, Santa Morgan's listed right there can you explain what X match is um, yeah so an X match is your X chromosome and so um, your mitochondrial DNA is based on mitochondrial DNA and not your X chromosome, which is kind of one thing that some people kind of don't know or get confused about. So an X chromosome, you get males just get that directly from their mother, um, whereas females get one directly from their mother and then a combination of, of another one from both their mother and their father. And so, if it's a male tester, they will be an X match to their mother, but not an X match to their father or any of the um, cousins who kind of come from a, a male on their tree. And there are lots of really good diagrams out there that kind of show like X inheritance. Um, and that's another way to sort your match list to kind of give you a better idea of where these matches might be found on your tree. Fabulous. Thank you for that explanation. So tell um, us about um, the, I know that we can go and check on a couple of these people and do an in common with or not in common with. Can you explain how that tool could be beneficial? Sure, so um, an in common with, um, we have um, the family matching um, buckets like Clayton was mentioning. Um, and that is a way for um, the system to automatically go in and say these people are in common with your mother, but you could also do um, just a basic um, in common with or not in common with. So if I were to do an in common with a mother relationship, then I would get everyone who matches me and who matches uh, the other person. So in this case, the mother. So it could be assumed that all of these people are found on the maternal, uh, like mother's side of the family, or they are your child. So they would be, you know, on both, um, like as this father and son um, one. With this kit, it's a little, um, 
uh, not quite as clear because this um, individual is from an endogamous um, group. And so a lot of his matches will be on both, uh, um, kind of in that both categories. So they will be matches to um, on both sides of his family. Good point. I'm glad you pointed that out. Awesome. And so uh, that tool could also be used when we're trying to separate out certain cousin lines or something to say not in common with. If we can find somebody that, like I was using this example and uh, I did this with, and I know we're going to talk about YDNA in a little bit, but I, I did um, something similar when I was trying to discover uh, the father of my first cousin and um, he didn't he did not know who his father was so what I did was I went in here on the family finder on his account and I said okay I know my DNA is here so anybody that's in, not in common with me and his DNA separates out my side of the family so we can discover who's on his father's side of the family because his mother's side is 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 where I come from and so yeah. uh, that way we could separate out. This is a great uh, tool for people who are looking for missing parentage. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a perfect example. So explain from this view how the chromosome browser might work. So um, when you're on your Family Finder matches page and you've done a little bit of research and you have a few people who you are interested in comparing between each other, um, you can click on a few people and you'll see that there's um, a list here that kind of keeps track of everybody who you're selecting. And so we can select a couple people and then we can come up here to the chromosome browser. You can have up to seven people um, to compare at one time. So you'll see that these are the three people that we selected from the Family Finder Matches page. And as we um, go down, we'll see that each of these is uh, dis like depicting um, an, a chromosome. And so this first person, um, we have it listed as a half-sister uh, or a grandmother, granddaughter situation or an aunt or niece. And so um, we would expect to have a lot of um, DNA in common and long blocks in common with this person. And the second one is a first cousin or it, it's pretty likely that it's a first cousin. And so we'll have smaller blocks of cinnamorgans or DNA that we share with that user. And then the last person is a child. And so we'll see that most of the chromosomes are shared with that person because it's a direct, um, you have more um, blocks shared with a person closer to you, closer relationship to you. Um, and so you can see that some of these are overlapping each other um, in like where they're found on your chromosomes. And so you can see that you can make assumptions on this is the piece of DNA that's being shared between these users. And so we can, um, with cousins, we can say, you know, all of these people are sharing this area. And so we can then use groups of people to sort our matches as we go forward and sort them into um, like family groups at that point in time. Um, another feature of this is the um, kind of threshold. And so we can change it to be higher and higher threshold. So this person or these people must have set a longest block of seven center Morgans or more. Um, and so that can kind of weed out um, segments that just happen to match each other based on how uh, the DNA um, is recombined when the chat when the user gets that um, DNA from their parents um, and so you can also go you know kind of I wouldn't have to share one, one set of Morgan personally but <laughs> yeah exactly we highly recommend using about seven or five um, Cinnamorgans, but there might be some use cases and some families where that one Cinnamorgan might make the difference 
um, for people. For the audience at home, how this might be uh, beneficial for genealogists is if you take a group of DNA uh, matches, either siblings or first cousins from the same side of the family, you can almost rebuild the uh, DNA of your ancestors, which could be very beneficial down the road. Plus, uh, they have the ability to download the segments here. So then you can then compare that later with other cousin matches that you might not know who, how they fit. But if that other cousin match that you don't know how they fit matches with this cluster that you have uh, created here and you can see where segments are overlapping, then you know that they're from the same side of the family. So it's those areas that are overlapping that you can start rebuilding the, that line of your ancestry. It takes a little study to figure out how it works, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, we also have this um, detailed segment data, which is um, instead of having to download all of your segments and you know know how to use Excel and all that kind of um, stuff, you can see the information here um, and you know sort by columns and things like that. And so that way you don't have to download and do all of these things to manipulate the information um, outside of your chromosome browser page, you can do all of that here. Very cool. Um, if they want to, if anybody wants to find out more about help with, how do they, if there, is there a help section on the website where we can uh, get more information? Yeah. Um, yes. So we've got a lot of different um, resources for people who, um, you know, if you're, wanting to take a test but you don't know which test to take or you know you've gotten your results and you uh need someone help someone's help um better understanding your results um we have a lot of different resources uh first and foremost i usually recommend that people always like i said join a group project because group project administrators are are, are um they understand the platform, they know the platform, and they're, they they want to help um, you understand your genealogy. They enjoy people, um, you know, especially their group, pro you know, their group project members, because they think that, you know, other people doing their own research is going to help further their research. So joining a group project, yeah. you have your group project administrators emails, and you can contact them with questions. We also really advocate for users to go to our learning center. We have a really great learning center. Um, it is uh, located, you can access it by at the bottom. If you're not logged into your account, you can access it at the bottom of, in the footer of the website. If you're logged into your account, all you have to do is go into the top right hand corner um, where your image and your kit number are and um, hover over that and a drop down will come out where you can go to the Learning Center. We have tons of information, tons of topics in the Learning Center. We also have family tree DNA forms where people find that people find very, very useful. Um, and you can locate the forms by um, scrolling down into the bottom of the, uh, in the footer of the website. Uh, again, I would be logged out, um, but you can go and ask questions there. Then we also have an in-house customer service department. Um, and a lot of our customer service people are avid genealogists themselves. So I think that's really helpful. They're also uh, are people with like anthropology backgrounds and degrees. Um, and so they're very, very knowledgeable people and um, that you can contact them by submitting a form. Again, you can find it in the drop dropdown uh, in the under your, um, under your actually profile. you can find it. The, um, at the bottom in the footer, you go to contact us, and from there you can either fill out a form, uh, and customer service can contact you via email. You can call the customer service phone number, and then we also have a live chat available to people. Fabulous. Well, thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, that was a ton of information to absorb. You may need to watch these videos again. In part two, we're going to talk about the Y DNA and how it can help you with your uh, genealogy. This one is specifically for the male line in your family. 
It is a very powerful tool for researching the men in your family history. You'll definitely want to see this one. In part three, we're talking about the mitochondrial DNA and how it can help you trace the female line of your family history. As a reminder, if you're interested in signing up for any of the Family Tree DNA products, I have put an affiliate link for your convenience in the show notes below. If you have taken a DNA test, I would love to hear about it. Put it in the comment sections below. In fact, which test did you take and where did you take it? I'm most interested to hear. Okay, so don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time we upload a video. Genealogy TV has a newsletter, a website, and a Facebook page. Make sure you're hooked up with all of those. Those links are also in the show notes below. If you want to learn more about DNA, uh, there are cards on the screen now to help you with that. And it's time for you to go find your ancestors. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.